Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is wonderful to be back here at the World Government Summit this morning, and I am particularly pleased to be leading this discussion on what is one, if not the most pressing, pressing issue of, of our time, and that is climate crisis, and more specifically, how mobilizing private capital alongside climate policy is absolutely critical to transforming the world economy and putting us on a path to net zero by 2050. Well, I'm pleased to have Maktar Diop, who is the Managing Director of IFC, which is the private sector finance arm of the World Bank, joining us today. Maktar, it's super to have you. This conversation couldn't be more important. COP28 at the end of this year, we've already heard um, the narrative here at the beginning of this World Government Summit about how critical climate crisis is to all of us and why this year is not about dithering, as one person described it, it's about trying to ensure a paradigm shift. So how do we do that? Let's start with the obvious. Private companies, private funds have assets under management or own to the tune of hundreds of trillions. So. What's the funding gap for emerging markets? Why? And what are we going to do about it? Thank you very much, Becky. And the INS just said that the world doesn't have a problem of resources. The world has a problem of managing these resources. We have a problem of managing our resources to make sure that we're using renewable energy, but also we have a problem of managing the existing liquidity in the world and direct it to productive investment. Today, we estimate that one trillion uh, uh, million dollars will be needed to be able to have the energy transition in a lot of countries. What is trillion missing? Trillion a year. A year. It, what is missing? What is missing is a bank, a bankable project. What is missing is an ability for the private sector to assess the risk properly. Mm. As you know, the risk signals are very confusing to the, confused today. We have war. We have an earthquake. We have events which are making it much more difficult for people who wanted to make decisions in investing to make the, the decision right now. So we need to de-risk those investments. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we are trying to do at the IFC, to have mechanism where we can bring a set of bankable projects that we call a platform, which mm -hmm. have simplified procedures, but also to bring some grant money that will be useful to be able to de-risk that investment. First losses, guarantees, are those type of products that the private sector is is, is required. Let's just be quite clear about this. Do you genuinely believe the private sector has appetite, sees the commercial value, the, as somebody described it, the biggest commercial opportunity in a lifetime? Do they get it at this point? Does it get it? Absolutely. I'm signing today with the Abu Dhabi Fund, Development Fund, a platform of $1.5 billion where we'll be co-investing with them in emerging countries around the energy mm. transition. But what is interesting and beautiful in this current situation is that we'll not be rebuilding the, the world the way we did it in the past, but totally differently. Uh, we, today, when we talk about green hydrogen, which is a new source of energy that we're all talking about, it's mainly located in developing countries, mm. because that's where you have the sun, mm. that's where you have hydro in quantity. So you have a world where today you will see Countries which are starving with energy, we could be exporter of energy and contributing to the global public goods solution. So I think so. Today it's just a matter of matching those, as you say, the liquidity mm. which is available, the capital, and find them, or find the opportunity. That's why we are developing a concept of warehouse, where we'll be warehousing some of the assets, warehousing some of the project to be able to present it to the capital market in a in a. What does that mean, warehouse? Warehousing, it means that you have uh, uh, assets which are available, which needs to be uh, transformed in a, in a green way, and we are bring them, bringing them to the, to the capital market in a, in, in a way where we are um, uh, uh, de-risking those investments mm. and ex uh, uh, allowing investors to, to green those assets which are currently not green assets. Mm. So you are helping them, for instance, to transform coal, coal uh, uh, mining into into green energy and to help supporting that transition with resources that we are collecting for different parts of the capital market. We only had 15 minutes. It's hardly time to start, but yes. we are, and we're halfway through. So let me crack on. The IFC is the 
largest global development institution focused on the private sector in emerging markets. In fiscal year 2022, and correct me if I'm wrong on these figures, I think I've got them right, uh, the IFC committed a record 32.8 billion to private companies and finance, financial institutions in developing countries. You are mobilizing private funds for private sector projects. But that figure, 32 billion, is a drop in the ocean, given what we've just described as these funding needs. What needs to happen next? And is an organization like yours, I mean, I'm talking about the World Bank here, but the private sector, is it fit for purpose at this point? There's lots of talk about how the MBDs need to reorganize because, quite frankly, the answer here is greater investment, isn't it? But Absol it's ensuring that that investment is, is de-risked. We are in the middle of a conversation that we call the evolution roadmap at the World Bank Group, where we are discussing the way the World Bank Group can do even more to support this effort of energy transition mm -hmm. and help countries to fight climate change. This is a, a conversation which will require mobilizing more grant money because uh, part of the resources of uh, uh, the World Bank Group are raised on the capital market. It's not grant money. Mm -hmm. But what we need more to be able to accelerate this transition have an, an adoption of technology which is currently more expensive or being able to invest in places which mm. are considered as riskier is to have more grant money. And that's why actually we, and let me tell you why it's important. For $1 of grant money that we are receiving, we are able to mobilize $10 of, uh, of, uh, of uh, capital to, uh, to, to invest in climate change, $1 for 10. Mm. So if we manage to have a bit more of investment uh, of grant money, we'll be able to multiply significantly investment. And actually, we, are, we think that we can increase this multiplier effect significantly. And this is what many emerging and developing markets are asking for, concessional capital. Absolutely. Effectively, when you've got a, you know, a world sort of, you know, uh, w w with the sort of global economic headwinds that we have at present, these heavily, heavily indebted nations, concessional capital, as it's known, grant led. But is there some interesting things that are happening in the world? Uh, you, know, you just had a, a wonderful uh, uh, speech mm. here, which gives the, the challenges of the world. AI, I mean, and let's give a lot of credit to, to, to UAE for having the first country mm -hmm. to have a ministry, minister of AI. It means that when you are preparing contract today, it will take much less time. Can you can use AI to have contract. When you're doing PPPs, the process will be much faster. So if you think about all these technological adoptions that we're having today, and this new technology available, if you combine all these, we are able to, to have a better understanding of risk, to have processes which are much faster, and to be able to accelerate that, proce that, that process. And I think that this is what we need to, 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 to do today, mm -hmm. not to think things in silos, but to see how these trends that we are seeing in the world will allow us to accelerate. The, the urbanization of, uh, of uh, less developed countries is also an opportunity to accelerate this access of, el of electricity. And last, I want to finish with an interesting story. We talk about population growth. Do you know that uh, the, the first uh, black woman who is an AI professor at Princeton mm -hmm. is from Senegal? Wow. Which is uh, where you're from, of course, yeah. Her parents were illiterate, mm. and she's today a professor of AI at Princeton. What does it mean? Is that if we also invest in ca human capital in, in, in those places, in places which are considered today as being remote, we are able to transform radically the world to have a population which can be created wealth at, at a time where we don't think that they can do that. So I think it's a, my, my view is that we need to think holistically and not to think about just one part mm. of the challenge that we are facing today. How optimistic are you that the funding gap will be met? I'm optimistic because actually, Oil exporters country are the largest investors in renewable energy today. Mm. Oil exporters country are the largest investors in renewable. It means that there is a convergence of view today about what are the challenges. And the world cannot be divided in those who are for and against. We are all converging and have the same views. And the resources that are as that available today, the liquidity in country like UAE or Abu Dhabi are today uh, resources that we are channeling 
to developing countries. And that's exactly the reason why I'm here today, because I will be working with all the partners to be able mm. to see how we can accelerate that process. You've talked about some of the successful projects the IFC has been involved in, um, and clearly using this as sort of roadmap for future investments. I do just want to finish with a view from you as to how the private sector looks at mitigation versus adaptation and where you see the biggest challenges at this point. Absolutely. I think that adaptation, we need to do much more on adaptation. Mm. Uh, because actually investing in adaptation is fighting poverty. Adaptation is what? Is coastal erosion in the poor country? Adaptation is what? Is agriculture in a desertic area? Uh, which stop m migration from the Sahel and other parts of the world. So investing in adaptation is really a big question, I think, that we'll be facing in the coming years is access to water. We haven't talked a lot about it. We talk a lot about energy transition. I think one of the big challenges that we'll be facing in the coming years will be access to water uh, because it's a, 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 a foundation for all of these. And I do think that the COP28 uh, uh, gives us an opportunity to bring all this together to be able to discuss about energy transition, to discuss about use of technology and AI, to think about how water can be used more efficiently and better, and to be able to look at all, uh, all that in the context of, uh, of, uh, of migration and shocks that we are having currently. Finally, just let's talk about briefly the opportunities that exist for us to be successful as a world on the road to net zero by 2050. Emerging economies need to uh, decarbonize across the entire economic sector. Where are the best opportunities? We're talking transport, industry, new fuels, electricity. Where are the best opportunities and where are you seeing the money going at present? What we are doing, we have developed what you call the NDC, National uh, uh, Development. We have a CCDR, which is a product that the World Bank Group has developed. It's a climate change uh, diagnostic which look at, at every country and look at specifically what is needed for them to accelerate that transition. Mm. Because at the end of the day, this is a country-led process. We cannot do it from outside. Mm. So we identify country by country. For some country is hydrogen. For some country is more investment in hydro. For some country is to do a, a certain number of, of things. But let's not also forget uh, efficiency. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we can produce e energy, but if we don't use it efficiently, we will not be able to reach our target. So all these give us uh, giving opportunities for countries today to accelerate the, transi the transition, and I'm very, very optimistic because what I'm seeing is a total convergence everywhere I'm going on the need to invest more on the energy transition, and actually we are preparing a report with the International Energy Agency that we would like to release around June, where we'll be uh, discussing the, the role of the private sector in the energy transition. So I'm looking forward to sharing the report with you when and it's ready. And we look forward to getting that from you. The global stock takers at the end of this year will be going on this year and we'll get the results of that. We know it's not going to be great, yes. but the idea is it provides a path for the work that you're doing. I know will uh, help inform uh, that global first ever global stock take, which is here uh, in uh, the UAE. Thank you very much indeed for joining much. us. My colleague Richard Quest is up next with the head of the IMF. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.